you doing, brother? Can I ask you a question real quick? This is five minutes of your time. Take, take a look at this sign real quick. Put this up. What, is, what do you consider yourself to be? What is your nationality? What is your race? You said American black? Look at the sign right here. Mic check. Look at the sign right here. On this right side, these are the names that other nations have gave our people. On this left side, this is what God calls you. So if you're, if you're claimed to be an American black in this present time, you are actually from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Guess what? That's true black history. Give me Jeremiah chapter uh, 14, verse 2. Because a lot of people don't understand that the real Jews are black. The real Jews are us. Right There's now. not those fake Jews in that land right now with them little twists in their hair, wearing them trench coats and all that. That is not the real Jews. They are imposters. They are the ones that stole your heritage as being God's chosen people and said that's them and said you are niggas and said you are spits when actually you are God on this earth. You understand? And I'm going to prove it to you. Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Bring it out. Judah Mourner. Who? Judah Mourner. So who we talking about? We talking about Judah, right? Really? And the case thereof language. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are what? They are black. What did, what did the Bible just say the Jews are? What? The, the Bible just said the real Jews are black. Yeah, Have you ever heard right. any Christian pastor bring that scripture out in their church? You will never hear your, uh, your Christian pastor bringing out those scriptures because they want to keep you destroyed. They want to keep you believing in this white man right over here, saying worship him and everything will be all right. But that is not the truth. The real Jews are what? They are black unto the ground. It said they are black unto the ground. Now, when you take a look at the ground, right? You look at dirt. What color is the dirt? It's brown. God said the Jews is the same color as the dust of the ground. Bring the, it out. The deeper you dig, the darker the dirt gets, right? So we are just like the dirt of the ground. We are different shades of brown. You understand that? Now, give me, uh, give me that in Hebrews. Let me show you who else comes from the tribe of Judah. Let me show you who whose blood you have flowing through your body right now. Alright? Who what you got? The book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. Bring it out! For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. See that? What do people say our Lord and Savior is? They say our Lord and Savior is who? Jesus Christ, right? They say what? Read that again. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. He said our Lord Jesus Christ sprang out of Judah. So if he, if he was walking on this earth today, he would be a so-called black man just like you. That's right. You understand that? You understand how powerful that is to be a, uh, a God on this earth? Do you, do you think that we can just do whatever we want to to be in that proper position as gods? Do you think that uh, a God has a mannerism he should walk after? Do you think he has ways he should walk in? Or do you think he can do whatever the hell he want to do? Huh? Get out! He got to walk as a God, right? So give me uh, Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. You are absolutely correct. So as being a black man, a so-called black man on this earth, you understand that you are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah and that we must walk in a mannerism. And God has those mannerisms written in his book. And I'm about to show you something real quick. Read what you got. The book of Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. Now, therefore... If you will obey my voice indeed. See that? God said, if you obey my voice indeed, read, and keep my covenant. And do what? And keep my covenant. You know what a covenant is, brother? Huh? Yeah, do you know what a covenant is? Okay, all praise, I got you. A covenant is an, an agreement. So when you read during the time of uh, uh, Exodus, Moses was given commandments from, straight from God to give to the children of Israel. And God is telling them now, if you obey those commandments, the covenant I've given you, to you in that day, we don't. And keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. You see that? God said, if you obey my voice indeed. How you doing, sister? So what we're doing right now, we're going over some black history. And I'm telling him that we are not no niggas and spicks. We're actually God's chosen people. So if you take a look at this sign, you'll be able to identify what God calls you. You will be a so-called American black 
will be from the tribe of Judah. All right? So if you listen to this, what I'm explaining to him, if we walk after God's commandments, he would do this to us. Read that last part. Okay. And for all, hold on, I'm sorry. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. God said, if you obey my voice, meaning his commandments, I will set you above high, above all people. So now you got to stop and think. <clears throat> These people on this side, American blacks, West Indians, Haitians, are they ruling this earth right now? Do we, have, do we live in the best places of this earth? We don't, right? What about, what, what would you say? Do we live in the best places or do we live in the slums and the ghettos? Huh? Look at the majority part. Like when you go to uh, 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 J.C. Napier, who, what, what race of people is mainly living there? Black people, right? So are we above all people living in those, con in those conditions? Do we own America? When you Google Americans, what nation of people pop up? Black people or white people? White people. So we don't own this country. We are still living in the land of our captivity. That's right. We are still living in the land that we was brought here as slaves. So that is not a position that we want to live in. So you got to ask yourself, well, if God loves us, and he said, where you got to go? Let me ask you this. Okay, so before I let you go, what is your nationality? You're black. Who told you you was black? So you say you, you physically black? What, what color is your shirt? You see what I'm saying, sister? So, so don't worry, don't, don't I'm just saying. Let me, let me show you something real quick. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. So I want you to understand, I'm not trying to put you on blast and then I'm trying to give you some true black history because today is what? February 1st, right? This is Black History Month. And I'm trying to prove to you that black history is in this Bible. That those Christian churches is teaching, they're not teaching you the truth about the Bible. They're teaching you this. Hold that sign up. Seize a bow. Somebody get that for me. They say that this is Jesus Christ. You cannot find this description in the Bible. I can prove that Jesus Christ actually looks like him. He looks like this brother. He looks like me. He looks like all these black men over here. Get that for me. I'm going to prove that to you. God and his son looks just like you are his chosen people. Do you understand that? That's right. Bring it out. Z, do you understand what I'm saying to you? So you are not black. You are not a nigga, you are not a negro. You are not a bee, you are not a hoe. You are a princess of God. That's, That's what I'm trying to make you understand. And your history is written in this book. All right? Read what you got. The book of Revelations. Huh? Revelations chapter 1 verse 1. Bring it out. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So what we're about to do is reveal what Jesus Christ looked like. You hear me, Z? Yes. All right. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So this is John the Revelator. When he heard a voice call his name from behind him, he turned around and looked, right? And he said he seen what? Seven golden candlesticks. He said he seen seven golden candlesticks. Somebody hold both these signs up for me real quick. Come up real quick, Z. I want you to see something. Somebody hold this seizure bow up too. What sign do you see with seven golden candlesticks on it? Which one? Point to it. The one on the left? Okay, so that's strike one on this image. Because that's what, this is what they say is Jesus Christ, right? So we are proving to you that this image already has one strike according to the actual biblical description of Jesus Christ. Bring it out. You with me? All right, read on. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. And in the middle of those seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Just like this brother got on right here. He had a garment going all the way down to his feet. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And his belt was made out of pure gold. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Stop right there. So what people has wool like hair? Who? So where did they get this description from? The first description of Jesus Christ starting from the top said his hair was white like wool. Bring it out. Where the hell did they get this imposter from? You see that? You see what they're trying to do to you? They're trying to destroy your mind. And what we are doing right now, we're trying to instill 
the righteous position back into your mind. That's right. Because for far too long they told you that you was nothing. But this book says you are greater than every single person on this earth. Yes, you understand Lord. that? What's your name, but I didn't get your name? Say what? Jew? Okay. I'm going to call you Jay. You might call you Jay. So you understand that, right? You are supposed to be above all nations on this earth. So whatever the white man calls you, forget that because he is supposed to be beneath you. But you got to come back to God's commandments if you want that position. You understand? We don't. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And it said his eyes were as a flame of fire because what? When you drink a little bit of wine, a little bit of alcohol, what happens to the whites of your eyes? It gets real veiny and starts to turn red, right? Go ahead. And his feet. And his what? And his feet. Like unto fine brass. So, what color is brass? Jay. Huh? Brass. B R A S S. Uh, wow. Okay, what about you? What color is brass? Like a uh, brownish color, right? So it say Jesus Christ's feet. So now, next question. Is your feet the same color as the, rest, as the rest of your body? Your feet ain't pink and your body's brown, is it? So pretty much the same color, right? So looking at, John looking at uh, uh, Christ's feet, he said his feet is like unto fine brass, right? Well, let's see how brown or how brass his feet was. Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. So now, if you throw anything into a furnace, what color is it going to turn? Huh? It's going to be dark. And you throw some uh, white rice and you burn it, it's going to turn what? Black. So Jesus Christ is what? He is a very dark skinned black man. The same, about the same skin tone, probably a little darker than you. That's right. You understand that? Yeah. So you got to understand your position as being uh, 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 a child of God on this earth. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Bring it out. Bring it out. I hope you understand what, that Christ is a black man, that his father, God, is a black man, and you are a princess of God, and you got to come back to his commandments as an Israelite. So no longer you should call yourself black. Next time somebody asks you who you are, you should say you are an Israelite. All right? So watch this. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. See that? God said you are in a holy people. When you, when you say something's holy, it means you say it's, it's separate. He made everybody on this earth. Yeah, he made the white people. Yeah, he made the, uh, 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 the Chinese people, the Japanese people. But he said you are in holy people, meaning he separated you from all the nations he created. Right? We don't. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. He did what? Have chosen thee. That he chose you, we, to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. If God said we were supposed to be above all people, why did we have to go through uh, the civil rights movement? Why did we have people like Martin Luther King fighting for our rights to uh, to go to use the same bathroom as a white man? Why do we have people like um, Malcolm X fight for our rights? Why do we have people like, uh, um, give me some more names, uh, Marcus Garvey. Why do we have people like those having to fight for our people when God says we are supposed to be above all nations? What do we do wrong? That's a question that should be popping up in your mind. What do we do wrong to be in this position that we are in right now? Right. Exactly. We had a so-called pastor had to give us a nationality. Right. You know this, uh, uh nationality of, uh, of African-American, is what, like 20 some years old? 20 some odd years old, 28 years old. It's, it's younger than a lot of people that's on this earth right now. But our people's going around calling themselves American black, African Americans, name themselves two different continents. How do we get down this to, to this position? Do you know how we got this low? See, you don't know, what about you? How do we get in this position? So we're gonna show you how we got into this deep and dark place and how we get out of this deep and dark place, all right? Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes. Where you going, Z? All right, so make sure you don't run off. We are getting to the best part right now. Read that again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, 
that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You hear that, Jay? God said, if you don't listen to my commandments and do all of them, because now, how many commandments do you think is in the Bible? They say 10, right? But God said you got to do all of them. Now, in those 10 commandments, do you find thou shalt not rape? You don't find it, but is, is rape good? It's not good, right? So that, that's all to make it pop into your mind. There's more than just 10 commandments. That's right. So the only way you can find out those commandments, all the commandments that God wants you to do, you got to pick this Bible up and read it. Bring it out. Don't go to those Christian bosses, because all they want is tithe money. All they want is a little piece of change. You hear me, brother? That's all they want. We watch this. Before you go, I want to get to the main part so I can make sure you know that you're a child of God. So remember, God yeah. said, if you don't listen to his commandments, he's going to put curses upon you, right? Give me verse 68. I'm going right to wait to the point. What would you got? Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with silks. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Read that one more time. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Okay, so God said he's going to bring us into Egypt. So now when you examine the word Egypt, you look at the etymology, it's, it's uh, synonymous for bondage or slavery. So God said he's going to bring us into Egypt again, right? Or, or slavery or bondage again, right? How? With ships. With what? With ships. So let me ask you this, Jay. How do we get from the west coast of Africa to America? On what means of transportation? Ships. So guess what? This is black history in the Bible. Yes, but right. Africa don't give a damn about it. They'll go to and fro, going about their own day, not knowing that this is February 1st. This is supposed to be Black History Month. Why is this whole street not filled with black people? We are standing right beside the HBCU, but nobody give a damn about the word of God, about their black history. They'll go around rocking hats of Greek fashion. They'll go, they'll go about stomping to the Q-Dogs, to the AKAs, to all these other Greek fraternities, not knowing that their history is in the Bible. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.